Hello stats teachers, my name is John Pritchett and I'm a math teacher in residence at NumWorks. In this video I'm going to introduce the NumWorks calculator and demonstrate how it can enhance your classroom experience. For those of you that are new to NumWorks, the NumWorks calculator was made by statistics teachers for statistics teachers. You can now spend less time troubleshooting and more time engaging with your students. In addition to the handheld calculator that is approved for all AP exams as well as the SAT and ACT, NumWorks also provides a free online calculator and mobile app. Not only are these great for classroom presentations, but they also provide your students with continuous access to the calculator. Today I'll be using the online calculator and I invite you to join me on your handheld calculator, mobile app, or by navigating to numworks.com simulator. Numworks had a simple goal, create an intuitive device that brings simplicity to the classroom. We wanted you to be able to spend less time teaching how to use the technology and focus your teaching on the actual math and statistics. The NumWorks graphing calculator utilizes a familiar app-based interface. There are four apps relevant to the AP Stats course. The Statistics app is great for one variable data sets where you can view graphical displays such as box plots and histograms as well as summary statistics. The Regression app is used to analyze two variable data sets by constructing scatter plots, adding regression models, and viewing residual plots. In the Distribution app, you can use known probability distributions to compute probabilities with great visuals. And finally, the Inference app provides an intuitive way to construct confidence intervals and perform hypothesis tests. Let's dig into these apps. We'll navigate to our first application, Statistics, using the arrow keys. To open the application, click OK. Notice that there are three tabs at the top of the screen. The first tab, Data, is where we enter our data. We can enter up to three data sets. For each data set, we have a column for our values and a column for our frequencies. Let's add some values into the V1 and 1 columns. We can view graphical displays of our data using the Graph tab. We can navigate up to the tab using the up arrow but the back key will also jump us to the tabs, which can be really helpful for large data sets. Here we can look at a histogram, box plot, cumulative frequency plot, or normal probability plot. Let's look at the histogram. Notice the frequency and relative frequency at the bottom of the screen. Using the left and right arrows, we can move into different bins. We can use the settings to change the bin size and the start value. Let's use a bin width of 2. Now let's select Type to change from a histogram to a box plot. The box plot provides us with the five number summary in the bottom banner. Use the left and right arrow keys to see each value with its name to reinforce vocabulary use. Box plots will also indicate outliers automatically. If you'd like to change this view and not include outliers, you can deactivate this in Settings. Finally, the Stats tab provides all summary statistics for our data set and includes both the vocabulary term and the symbol. We start with the five number summary, the range, the IQR, and mean, standard deviation, and variance. At the bottom of the list, you will also see a mode and its frequency if one exists. Let's return to the Data tab and explore the column options. Navigate to the top of your data set and click OK. Here we can select to sort our values in increasing order, fill our column with a formula, toggle on whether or not we want to display these values in the Graph and Stats tab, clear the table, and add a column of cumulative frequencies. Let's start by toggling on the cumulative frequencies. Clicking the Back button, we now have a column of cumulative frequencies. Comparing distributions is easy with the Statistics app. We'll just add a second data set. When two or more data sets are entered, you can compare the data sets using the graphical displays as well as the summary statistics. We'll return to the Graph tab to view the parallel box plots. 
use the up and down arrows to view values from either data set. And back on the Stats tab, we use the right arrow to view the summary statistics for both data sets. Click on the Home button to return to the main screen of the calculator. We'll now explore the regression application. Similar to the Statistics app, we have three tabs. The first tab is where we will enter our data, but here we have columns for X and Y. For the first data set, let's enter some values. Once your data is entered, navigate to the Graph tab to view the scatter plot. You can use the left and right arrows to highlight each data point and see its values at the bottom banner. You'll see the correlation coefficient R in the bottom right hand corner. To add a regression model, simply click OK while on a data point. Both forms of the linear model are available. I'll select A plus BX. This returns us to the scatter plot where a line of best fit is now graphed. Notice that it provides you with a point corresponding to the means of x and y and shows that the regression line goes through this point. Now let's navigate to a data point using the right arrow key. Here I am at x equals 33 and y equals 53. Since we are above the model, we can navigate down to the line and see the predicted value of 49.51. At any moment, you can press OK again to return to the regression menu. Here you can change your regression model type, see your regression equation, coefficient of determination R squared, and the correlation coefficient. We can also create a residual plot to assess the fit of the line. Simply press OK on residual plot. Use the back button to return to the regression menu. The final options allow you to use the model to make predictions or solve for X given a predicted value. You can also remove the model if needed. The Stats tab will display the relevant statistics for your data. We will now return to Home and move to the Distributions app, where we'll see a list of several probability distributions, including the binomial, normal, chi-squared, student's t, and geometric distributions. Let's select the binomial distribution. Once the distribution has been selected, we need to enter its relevant parameters. For the binomial distribution, that includes the number of trials and the probability of success. Let's assume we flip 30 coins, where the probability of getting heads is 0.5. After selecting Next, we'll see a visual of our binomial distribution as well as a probability statement at the top. Let's determine the probability that no more than 12 coins are heads. That is the probability that x is less than or equal to 12. We already have the value of x highlighted, so we can simply press 12 and enter. Doing so, we get a probability of 0 0.1808. We also see the corresponding area shaded below. What if we don't want to find the probability that it is less than or equal to a value? Great question. Navigate to the top left icon and click OK. Here we can change our probability statement to be less than or equal to, between two values, greater than or equal to, or simply equal to. Let's find the probability that x equals 12 by selecting the last option. Heading back to the probability distribution list, let's select the normal distribution. Here we need the mean and standard deviation. Let's use a mean of 128, and a standard deviation of 12. We can do familiar calculations on the normal distribution, but let's actually work backwards. What value of x lies on the 90th percentile? That is, what value of x has 90% of the area to its left? What's great about this application is that your inverse calculations are built in. We can enter a probability in the rightmost box and obtain the value of interest. 
let's input 0.9. Now it's time for some inference. Let's head back to the home page and enter the inference app. Your students no longer have to sift through confusing calculator syntax to determine which test or interval they need to use. Instead, tests and intervals are split into two different sections. Let's check out the tests. Here we will also see full phrases like one proportion Z test or two means T or Z test. For example, let's say if we want to test if a new battery has a lifetime of more than 30 hours as advertised using data from 15 randomly selected AAA batteries from a company. To do this, we'll select the one mean. Because we don't know the population standard deviation, we'll need to select a t-test. The first things we enter are our hypotheses. You can start to edit right away by using the number keys and the alternative hypothesis is updated automatically. For this example, we will want to see if the true mean lifetime of these batteries is more than 30 hours. For the null hypothesis, we'll enter 30. We can adjust the direction of the alternative hypothesis by clicking OK when it is highlighted. From the drop-down box, we will change the direction to greater than. Now click Next. Here you will need to make a decision of inputting summary statistics or using a data set. Let's first investigate using a data set. Press OK to use a data set. Here you will be asked which data set you'd like to use. Pressing OK will allow you to use the data set stored in the statistics app, V1N1, V2N2, or V3N3. It is also worth mentioning that you can edit these values directly in the table or press OK on the top banner to clear the list. For this example, we will use V3N3 as it is already empty. Once the data has been entered, navigate to the bottom where you can change your significance level. I will leave mine at 0 0.05. Press OK on Next. The screen displays all needed calculated values such as sample mean, sample standard deviation, sample size, test statistic, p-value, and degrees of freedom. The final screen will provide a visual representation. We have the normal curve with the last statistic marked and the shaded region representing the p-value. We also have the rejection region shaded based on the alpha level. All relevant values are shown in the top banners, including the full name of the test. Backing up three screens, let's briefly take a look at how this works with summary statistics. Press OK on input statistics. Notice that our summary statistics have been pulled from the dataset into the appropriate fields. These values can be edited for any new scenario. From here, the test runs the same as it did with the dataset, reporting values and displaying visuals. We can now back out of the test and return to our list of tests. These will all work in a similar fashion, but one thing to note is that your chi-squared tests have built-in tables to enter observed values and, if needed, expected values. Let's back all the way out and enter our intervals section. Intervals will work in a similar fashion. For example, selecting a one-proportion Z interval will first enter our number of successes and sample size, along with our confidence level. The next screen shows our sample proportion, critical value, standard error, and margin of error. The final screen shows your confidence interval as at both a point estimate and margin of error at the bottom, as well as the endpoints of the interval along the line. You can even use the up and down arrows to see how the different confidence level affects the interval. I hope this demonstration has shown you some of the many ways that NumWorks is the perfect calculator for AP statistics. If you are ready to get started and want to explore the calculator more, you can request a free sample calculator. Simply head to numworks community to claim your free calculator. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact us at contact at numworks.com.